Some oh, gee, there's some bad news and some good news. I want to start with the good news. I, I love the fact that Mason Cox has signed a two year contract, which had been coming for a while, but the fact that it's two, I think, mm, is yep. incredible. That yep. the man who thought he was going to retire at the start of last year when things weren't going his way, coming off one year deals, his role in the side uh, questioned, him questioning it himself, the injuries. So for him to now be an integral part of this side and to sign a two-year deal, which Collingwood will, will trumpet shortly, I think it is amazing. The latest news just to hand is that Ash Johnson's re-signed for two more years as well. So, No one wants to leave the Collingwood party. Exactly what I was going to say. Yep. Why would you jump out now, yep. unless you're forced out, in which case Brody Grundy says hello, and he's his own uh, narrative at the moment and the way his season pans out, but that's a conversation for another time. Is he, in, is he vulnerable, Mason Cox, Jared, in their side? Uh, yeah, I think he's vulnerable, but I, I, he's in my Collingwood side. If I'm picking it, I think he's done enough this mm. this year. He he hasn't had a great month, but uh, gee, I've I've liked his year. But I they want he, it, yeah, they want it to work for him, don't they? Yeah. I thought you could read a lot into their team announcement from Thursday, Collingwood, in the sense that Ash Johnson, who's kicked six goals yep. in two weeks, I mean, right. a real life, I couldn't stay in, mm, Frampton. and Billy Frampton lost out as well. There's so going to be that, some great players miss out. Yeah, I mean, there might be some a, a really big name miss out of the midfield. Well, Tom, if Mitchell, everyone's available. Tom Mitchell could miss out. Oh, I think he, I think he would be vulnerable now after starting as a sub, and you think that's management, and then he yeah. came on for Pendlebury, but then being subbed out, and whether Adams and Dugowie and Pendlebury and yeah. Mitchell can play in the same side remains to be seen. High performing healthy sides. You're going to get this somewhere. Yeah, it's a bit like Daniel Richard Brisbane. Might be the hard luck mm. story come the end of the year. Well, that was the scary thing about uh, Collingwood's win on the weekend. In the coaches' votes, there were none of those big names. Sidey got uh, one. Mm. Um, uh, Taylor Adams got three. Murphy was the other one, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, but none of the key, to, no. none of the really big name mids. Taylor Adams would be about fourth or fifth in their chain, even though he's a terrific player. That's how strong they are. I know. Yeah, it is frightening with their depth, and and that's what I've been speaking about with Port Adelaide. They just don't have the depth that the mm. Pies have, and um, that's going to be, I think, a big story throughout September. Brisbane have also got some good depth, and they'll need it, Sammy, because some devastating injury news across the weekend. Oh, hasn't there, let's though? get in the injuries. Oh, let's start with the one that we're waiting on, and that's due to be out any minute now, and that's Carlton's injury update. So. This season of resurgence, if you like, in real danger of being derailed by this fresh wave of injuries, it's going to hit hard when it's dropped. So they're scrambling and have been for most of the day just to get to the bottom of Jack Sorvani's yep. knee injury. Now, I was initially told this could be anywhere from two to three weeks to a season ender. We can rule out the season ender. It's not that severe, but it's going to be some time. Definitely not playing this weekend. It's swollen. It's sore. It's quite a complex injury, I'm told. He's going to miss some time. It's a matter of how much, but I'm told forget the season-ending nature of it. So that's some little part of good news. Sam Walsh, I believe, is a standard hamstring, so that could be a three-week, a three- to four-weeker. Patrick Cripps, far from certain to play Mm. against Collingwood uh, with a corked hamstring and arrived at the club today with uh, compressioning all the way down that left leg of his, which, of course, is precautionary. But he's less certain to play than or less likely to play than Adam Adam Cherry with his own hamstring Mm. tightness. Jack Martin, a reasonable chance, we're told, but Jesse Motlop will most likely miss with his own calf problem. Uh, There might be, you know, four five fitness tests that can't come the end of the week with Corey Durden injured in the VFL again, where Mark Pitnett might be promoted from. He got through, performed pretty well against Sam Naismith. So that would at least allow Michael Voss to ruck with Pitnett and release Tom DeConing forward to at least, um, you know, offer some support to, to yep. someone like Charlie Kerno. So it's a we shame. Were, oh, it's a, it's a massive uh, shame. Because Friday night was shaping up to be yeah, every blockbuster. Yeah, they've yep. won their last five by 50 plus points of blues. But geez, your thoughts go out to obviously to Will Ashcroft. So we'll, we, we acknowledge that. But someone like Nick Murray went in oh, for scans shame. at Adelaide today and he walked in confident of playing in the showdown this weekend. It's just something mine. I'm just getting a check up. Yep. Walked out with scans confirming he's going to be out for 12 months. ACL. ACL. Which is uh, surprising, Jerry, because usually that ACL test, with the, with, when they do that and you, your knee clicks, yep. and if it clicks, it's good news because your ACL is intact. If it doesn't click, you know, the, the mechanism where the doctor checks your knee, they sort of yeah, lift it up yeah. and down. And if it slips, your ACL is Yeah, I'm not gone. sure they're looking for a click. I think they're just uh, looking for laxity. Aren't they looking for like a resistance yeah. that the ACL provides? Yeah, and that's if it's right. not there, it sort of slips. They're, they're pretty accurate with that, aren't they, the doctors? They're pretty good at diagnosing yep. that on the spot. Yeah, they are. Sometimes over the capsule and you can get uh, spasming around the muscles that can confuse that. It's not 100%. I'm not sure right. what the percentage would yeah. be. Maybe 70% accurate, but there's always one that slips through. Yeah. So that's In fact, a- I, I played with a guy who did it the week before. They backtracked to it, and he, he got through it the whole week. He trained, and then he played, and, wow. he, and he went into a spin motion, and that's when it 
collapsed. Collapsed. Gone. Yeah. Wow. So Isaac Rankin went into the same facility. That's a hamstring, a three to four weeker. Darren Burgess says there as well. And a nasty shot that uh, Bradley Hill took at the weekend in the mm. first quarter against the Kangaroos. So he's got a bruised lung. He went to hospital, obviously. Could have been anything this one. They think he'll miss just the one game. So he's said to have recovered quite well. And Jordan Ridley, I don't think we're going to see again. Well, let's say the rest of the home and away season. That's what Essendon expect. It's a, it's a high-grade quad sprain. And you knew it was going to be when you saw him do it kicking, mm. which was the giveaway there. And, and you think of the matchups that he would have had in the, yep. and he's been so integral this year. Buddy's coming up, Oscar Allen again. Uh, Nick Larkey, who's had a good season for North Melbourne. So we might not see Jordan Ridley for the remainder of the uh, season. Hill's a big out for the Saints. I mean, he was a big out yesterday, and he's going to be a big out. They've got some, have they got Hawthorne coming up? Yes, this week. I mean, yeah. it's they're playing some pretty good footy, Hawthorne. I know they, they lost, but uh, they had uh, Richmond well covered for a long period of time. And St Kilda just need to have get some more class into that group. Badly. I know, I know we're short on time, but the AFL's acting footy boss, Laura Kane, has moved to um, keep the peace at St Kilda today, going out there to Is chat she? to the footy club about the, uh, the roof, whether it was closed for long enough and when it should be closed. Obviously, Ross Lyons' press conference dominated by him saying the Saints and the Kangaroos were treated with contempt by the Marvel Stadium um, staff, which yep. essentially, of course, is the AFL, given the roof was left open overnight. It allowed a downpour of rain to saturate the ground. None of that. Ross had thoughts for punders who were coming in, whose mm. seats were wet as well. He said it wouldn't happen to the bigger clubs. Now, the AFL, as I say, the venue operator, they say they normally shut the roof two to two and a half hours before a bounce on game day, but because they knew there was rain forecast, they shut it at 11 on Sunday. Four, 4.40 was the bounce. So five more than five and a half hours ahead of time, they shut it. They thought that was enough. I mean, Ross Lyon, you, you would say it's a typical distraction attempt if it wasn't said with such venom because he was yeah. visibly angry and, and clearly angered by you the fact the that game, the game was Jared, I've got – Sympathy for the fans and the wet seats. That yeah. that shouldn't happen. But from I was just watching on TV, he said the ball was a cake of soap. I didn't feel that, that it was looked like that bad from TV. No, I didn't look at I didn't look at it that way, no. I've got to say. But uh, I was out in the ground and it was certainly uh, slippery. Was it? Yeah. Okay. Port Adelaide are going to appeal, obviously, the two-match ban given to Willie Rioli for striking Nathan Murphy on Saturday night. It was graded intentional. I think they're going to argue that it was careless. And then there's an impact grading as well. So initially medium where they try to get it down. I think they wouldn't be happy with this, but obviously, because they want him out there. But I think they'd be happy with one week. It was two that was a threshold for them. So they're going to try to argue that down at a minimum. Sam Petrovsky seat. And of course, the two for the dangerous tackle on Alex Chincotta and Hawthorne accepted the Ned Reeves dangerous tackle ban on Ivan Soldo. That was uh, a one match. Matcher. The round 24 fixture specifics that fans I know are waiting on. There's nine games to lay out here. The bulk of those games yet to be determined because the AFL is going to wait to see how the results shape out of this weekend. Round 20 has a couple of games the league's waiting on. A good problem to have because they're sport for choice just to keep the excitement going until the very, very last minute game. Luke Hodge is with us. Sammy Edmund is here and the usual suspects with you. Hodgey, let's talk about Melbourne and Adelaide. You've got some thoughts on the D's just holding on late. Yeah, well, we've seen it the last two weeks. They, um, I felt first quarter in the last 15 minutes against Brisbane, they were they were excellent. They uh, they got outplayed convincingly throughout the middle of the ground, and then we saw the same uh, against Adelaide. My, my, I was just sort of thinking, and where where do you guys see Melbourne? They're mm. they're a team who have had to make changes with their their, their forward structure. Grundy out, Gorn's obviously dominated in the ruck. Oliver to still come back in. Um, they they've comfortably will sew up a top four spot. Are they? Do they have a good enough list or when playing their best football to, to, max it, to match it with a Port Adelaide at home or, or a Collingwood? They will be there on preliminary final weekend for me. And from what happens from there, it's a bit in the lap of the gods. Yeah, I'm it, with Jared? you. They've got some issues to sort out that uh, may well be constrained by injury. But, uh, you know, they could go small in the forward line and still have Grundy as the second, as the second Ruckman. But uh, they've got uh, plenty of options there. The, the issue is, Hodgie, to you is – when do they need to make the call on this structure of the forward line? Well, you can't leave it. You can't leave it <laughs> too late. You've got to trial again. I know they went back and there was positive signs. I think Grundy kicked one goal three or one yep. goal four in the seconds uh, on the weekend. But I wouldn't be still trialing this in in round twenty three or twenty four. You need to know prior to them because we all know it's it's not. You can't just flick the flick the fingers in in finals and come and play your best football. So they want to be playing their ideal starting lineup in rounds 22. So you get 22, 23, 24 into a, a flying 
final series for, for mm. the Melbourne supporters, hopefully. Another part of the ground, I know, but I checked in with Melbourne this afternoon. So Clayton Oliver, still another two to three weeks mm. away. So uh, the hamstring injury that just won't quit, Kane. And how much was does Oliver and Fritch add to that side? Because they were obviously at the start of the year, we, we, mm. we know that their best, over what, we've, what they've given the last 18 months, is very, very good. Fritch is their most dominant forward, most consistent forward. Oliver, their most consistent midfielder. Is, are they going to be the difference in putting them back up the top mm. or pushing him past that prelim cane into, into another grand yeah, final? Yeah, well, well I, I don't know. Just I think the way that they defend the ground, I'm, I'm really impressed. I feel like we're a bit hard on, on Melbourne. I think they're, we, people are hard to please with them, as we've discussed probably the last month. They've just beaten Brisbane, who are, who are absolutely flying and were really good against them. Beat they've Collingwood. Beaten Collingwood mm. and they've beaten Adelaide. I know there's been some blips, but what team doesn't have that? And the way that they defend and the depth, I think they've now got through the midfield. And if Pickett continues that sort of form with more midfield opportunities, and he's an X factor, Chandler was important Keep for them. Keep Melksham. And Petrarca is a top three player in the league right now with what he's been able to do. That's the question. Do they keep Melksham? Because Melksham plays on the talls. He, he, he plays on the interceptors and, and he, he makes does a happen. really good keeping. job. I mean, yeah. ultimately, don't they just have to work out, are they playing Brown? Are they playing Smith? Are they playing Petty forward? Are they playing Petty back? I mean, it's all revolving around the second tall option, Hodgie, Grundy. in that forward line. Mm. Does it just become Grundy and they go mids and smalls around him? But I, th I think that's where we're, we're sitting here from afar looking at it going, we don't know. I, I don't think the Melbourne coaching no. or match committee know either. And I think that's the biggest issue for Melbourne. Because we, I think, Kane, you were going back saying, are we hard on Melbourne? I, yeah. I think we are because of our expectation. Like, mm. You watch what they've been able to do. I rate them as high as anyone when they're playing the football that we know they can. It's just they've got so many questions between fitness of a couple of genuine stars for them in Fritch and Oliver, but then also the the confusion of their forward structure with, with the coaches seemingly in the same position as what we are, and that, that's probably the biggest concern. Fritch is the one. If they can get him back. Have we got a time frame, or are they one of those clubs that is short, medium, long? No, <laughs> no, no. They've provided – it's about five-week mark, I think, four okay. to five weeks from still here. Still to go. Yep, All still right. to go, All yeah. Right. Hodgie, the Coleman medal, it's flawed, surely. Well, that's – I had a bit more of a look, and we realised – and don't get me wrong, it was entertaining. Uh, <laughs> watching, I watched a bit of the highlight. It's the only of reason Kuno. to watch. Well, he's played against them twice, and he's had 19 Hello. goals. And I'm sitting back going, well – as a full forward, that, that sounds all right on, on, on the resume. But I look through the, the Coleman at this stage, and this is why is it a little bit flawed. And, and I'm not having to go at the blokes up the top because all you can do as a full forward is play against the, the teams that, that, that come up against you. And you look at Kerno, he's played West Coast twice and kicked 19 goals. He's sitting on top with 64. We've got Taylor Walker who kicked 10 against West Coast. But then he's sitting on 54, and then there's Larky, who's um, got on 48. So they're the three. All those blokes play both West Coast and North Melbourne twice. Yeah. And then you look at the blokes that are sitting fourth down to seventh in Hawkins, Toby Green, Danaher, and Jeremy Cameron. None of those teams play North or West Coast twice, and three of them play Hawthorne twice. So you look back, the three bottom teams, Hawthorne, Toby Green, Danaher and Cameron, they don't get the opportunity to play against those twice. Is this where you sit back and go, and, and don't get me wrong, I said I'm not having to go against the guys up the top, but if Kerno can kick 19 in two goals, Taylor Walker's got them coming up in round 24. He kicked 10 against them. Yes. Larky's got North Melbourne, oh, sorry, got West Coast this week. Is it a bit unfair for such a prestigious award? Yes, Hodgie. I think to answer your question, yes. Now, Sammy Edmonds got the numbers. Hodgie, it looks like you're after the unofficial Coleman medal tally, which has been doing the rounds today. <laughs> this is the one that strips out West Coast and, and North Melbourne, which I'm not sure I'm with you guys. It's grossly unfair. I mean, he has kicked 9-3 three, and 10-3, three, Charlie, so he's had to kick straight and finish in those games. I do know what you're saying, of course. But under this revised... Coleman medal table, Nick Larkey, whose season probably hasn't got the credit that deserves in a battling outfit, has kicked 42 goals. So he would lead if those two clubs are a bit hard to play yourself, I suppose, as North Melbourne. Uh, Tex Walker, 41. Cameron, 39. Charlie Curnow, all the way down in eight, 36 majors, because you would have to subtract mm. uh, 25. I think it's worth a discussion with the All-Australian selectors as well. Like for the first, usually the Coleman medal would would get an all Australian Guernsey jersey. Only, I, don't, I think it's only not happened once or twice. Yeah, so I'm not suggesting that won't happen, but I think this year it's worthy of a conversation. Do you agree with that? I think it's uh, worthy of a conversation. It's going to be very difficult because you can't you can't extract games that yeah. have actually happened. I mean, they have happened, and you've got uh, you know if you kicked a bag of ten. It's uh, you can argue all you like about uh, whether it's fair or not, and I'm with you, Oji, but it's it's actually happened. So. Mm. 
it's going to be very difficult to uh, expunge that from the memory. Yeah. But uh, I've never been a fan of the guarantee that the Coleman medalist is in the All-Australian side. Yeah. And Tom Hawkins is the prime example. He gives away more goals than any other person. So, um, you know, if you miss by three and you miss out in the All-Australian side, well, big deal, really, mm. because the guy who gets it may have 45 more assists. All right, Hodgie, let's move on to the Tigers. We've discussed McWalter and, and whether or not he will get the job. What do you think? Should he get it with his record, which has been pretty solid? Uh, I'm normally against the caretaker coach just because mm. it's that short term, a bit of a spark for the players and, and in, you know, it's like when there's a bit of freedom, when the new caretaker coach comes in, it's not so much about defender, defending, it's more about going and playing attacking football. And then after a while, maybe the halfway through the next year after they've been appointment, appointed, that lull comes in. But watching watching Richmond, uh, I'm starting to turn. I, I'm, I'm a big McWalter fan after watching what they've been able to do. The fight back that they had on the weekend. Things weren't going their way. They were down by six goals at three-quarter time. And, and this is normally the time when they just walk – with the caretaker coach, the team will just run over the top of them. Um, they had fight. They, they each tweaked a few things. He changed a few tactics. And from what I'm seeing and from what other people, if you heard, hear what Ross Lyon, Ross Lyon's first person he wanted to appoint was McWalter. So it shows a bit if Rossi's chasing him as well. You listen to the Richmond players. So I think I'm starting to change my tune. And, and the way that Richmond are, are players are playing, the way they're speaking about him, I reckon he's put his hand up and, and definitely the, the, running, the front running for that job now. And if you look at uh, the tweaks he made against the Swans after they uh, the Swans were belting them uh, early in the piece, and uh, then he moved uh, Shea Bolton and Dustin Martin into slightly different roles. They got on top in the midfield, and uh, they ran home with it quite comfortably. It's going to be uh, a pretty good candidate that unseats him, I think, Kane. Mm, I agree with that. Um, we'll see how significant the process is. They seem to have started at late. They'd want to get moving on that. So are you they... hearing anybody, any of the managers, saying that uh, the Gold Coast are out looking for uh, various <laughs> no, people? I think, I think they're sorted. They're sorted, are they? Oh. <laughs> Speaking of coaches, are we? how far away from August are we? Has Kenny well, started negotiating days. there, Kane? Six days, Hodgie. I, I well, that's that's a decision, decision to make. Surely... Expecting it. Yep. 12.20 a.m. on the 1st of August yep. that they put out a press release. Remember Paddy Ryder, um, when he was back from the suspension, went to the club at 12.01 and tweeted a photo and says he's back. <laughs> I suspect something similar will happen out the front of Alan Scott Power headquarters where... Well, Sam's Kenny... just left the building. Is he, out the, is he out the back there? He's going to come back in and join us because he's got information that absolutely guarantees you that that deal's been done. It has to be. It has to be Now, done. Sam, you were telling me off air before that uh, the great man over in uh, Adelaide, Kenny, has uh, rung a uh, Melbourne Ruckman. Oh, no, this isn't my piece of news. Tom Morris mentioned oh, this this, this morning Morris, on, uh, okay. on SEM Breakfast right here. It was with you, yes. was it not? Well, he's, well, Tom Morris said this morning that Kenny wants Brodie Grundy to lead the Ruck division. Okay. What it does tell you <laughs> is that the coach thinks he's there. In he fact, should, he knows he's yeah, there. Yeah, and he should be. You're well, hardly going to wait. Until the end of the year, when you've got a well, finals. Um, hang on, he started this twelve months ago. He was at he was at the uh, the shop front. Yeah, yeah, he's just uh, what, remember that conversation we had yeah. last year, and you you didn't want to leave Melbourne. Well, we're still interested, just like GWS were as well. They're going to be pretty active, Port Adelaide. I think like Asava. Asava was probably going to be there. I'd be shocked if Asava doesn't get there. I know you mentioned Zerk Thatcher this morning uh, as well, Kane. And who knows what will happen with Brody Granny? So I've spoken to Melbourne at length on this. In their mind, he's going absolutely nowhere, which you would expect them yep. to say. But if it doesn't work out like Hodgie's canvassing um, come the end of the season, then the player has a decision to make. And if the player decides he wants to leave, well, that's a totally different equation. Hodgie, Sammy, how much space? Do you know how much space the Port have in their cap? Because you'd, you'd expect that Collingwood are paying a bit of a the clip uh, that Melbourne have now taken him. Will Melbourne have to pay a fair bit of clip? Because Port Adelaide get him on a third string deal. Yeah. He, if they've got that little bit of cash, <laughs> tell you what, look at that midfield. We've already spoken about how they dominated that young, energetic port midfield with a couple of standing ruckmans while Lysett was injured. I think if they've I got I'll be going after him for sure. Yeah, I think they've got plenty of room to answer your question, um, Hodgie. And and as I just said, they were after him last year, so clearly there is room to accommodate him. Um, and yeah, the deal would have to be restructured. So at the moment, Collingwood's contributing, as we know, somewhere in the vicinity of two to two fifty thousand uh, dollars on on that contract. That is close to a million dollars a season that he uh, the signed with Collingwood going back historically. And that original deal was the subject of a lot of debate internally at Collingwood. There were certainly some members uh, of the club who really 
wanted it and then other high profile people at the club didn't want it in the end he stayed and and it played a part in him ultimately leaving that footy club but uh, it would have to be restructured Jared and I'm assuming Port Adelaide could drive any number of negotiations with Melbourne but we are getting well well down the road well here. we are but uh, it's certainly going to be a, a, that discussion is going to be have Tom Brown had an interesting story last week the outgoing Tom Brown who's uh, yeah. moving to Sydney uh, we're, we're told he he said it doesn't carry over if he moves moves to another club I think he's still, he's still Collingwood are off the hook. Oh, like, yeah, Collingwood will be. Yeah. But, I mean, he's still owed close to a million dollars a yeah. season. No player's going to step back. He's not going to um, dissolve his contract just to no. get to Port Adelaide. So then that's a negotiation between the power and, and Melbourne. And given Melbourne don't want to lose him, well, I'm, not, I'm no. not sure I can see them contributing to his wage to play elsewhere. So that's a, well, that's a decision that the, for Port Adelaide. Wasn't that the big issue of um, why Collingwood signed him to that seven-year deal? Because he's an Adelaide boy and he was that – Keen to get yeah. back home, yeah. so that drove the seven-year, one million dollar mm. pay, and now all of a sudden they might get him on a discounted rate. Very good from Port Adelaide. It's good, mani- good management, isn't it, from, from Connor Sports who managed Brody Grant? Is that the lure from Adelaide was there? They had a commitment from Adelaide; he was going to go there. They used that for leverage, and then when it comes time to perhaps moving on from Collingwood, I'm, I'm not interested in going back to Adelaide. Hodgie, who's Port Adelaide's most important player? Oh. You go through stages where I thought at times at Alir Alir, yep. um, when he was firing, firing 18 months ago, I thought he was up there. What Butters and Rosie have been able to do um, as, a, as a tandem in, the, in that midfield, they're probably the, the two that sort of jump out off the page at me just because of mm. the, the size, the agility, the speed, the, what they can do from contest to contest. They're probably the two blokes that if they fall down, Port will probably fall down. Who do you think, eh? I think it's Aaliyah. Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. If he goes, they're in uh, all sorts of trouble. Hodges, as we move on to the Giants, and they've impressed you. Yeah, well, I think uh, we, we go back, and I know some are, are, are fan of this wild card or, or the play-in system. When I look at a team, the Giants are the, are the side that I feel for, and why I, I, I am pushing for the, the play-in system at the end of the uh, at the end of the season. You look at a team who had a new coach come in. They've had a tough draw. They don't play West Coast. They don't play North Melbourne twice. They're sitting seventh on the ladder at the moment. And I think since about round 11, they've lost one game and that was only from against the Tigers and that was by a goal. Mm. So as far as a team who we thought, oh, here we go. They've got all these high, high-paying midfielders. They're going to have to go through a rebuild. They're going to have to kick a few of them out. Um, you, you have to say, well done. Toby Green, as far as a skipper as well. Um, I, I always had... Probably more or Dawson as the All Australian captains, but tell you what, um, Toby Green has has been as good uh, as as any of the captains so far this year, and is having a, having a real impact. Just watching what he did on the weekend as well. Yeah, let's talk about that for a minute because there's some good candidates for All Australian captain, and you'd be hard pressed to go past Marcus Bonds and Pelly, I reckon, Jared, for what he's been doing oh. this year. There's a, this is massive competi- competition. Yeah, You've got it? Darcy Moore in there as and well. And you don't have to be the captain of your club, no. as we've no, seen but there's enough recently. legitimate. Toby Green's another one. Yeah, Hodges Zach Merritt's another one. Toby Green, but um, D- D- Dawson has been yeah probably Dawson. dropped off a little bit and, and the side has dropped off. But I, I initially, Pelly about round different. eight, when uh, Scott Pendlebury was flying, I thought he was uh, the best candidate a good nominee as well. for the All-Australian. But to, to be the captain, Hodgie, you've got to be in it. But yeah. uh, to me, Bont right now, has uh, been the most dominant captain uh, of the year. And I think very rarely I think we get to this stage. Normally one or two of the the captains have normally stood out and put their hand up and you're thinking he's going to be um, the leader in the pack. But we've just mentioned four then and you, you can mount a yeah. very good case. Yeah, for, for and sure. you, I'm, looking, I'm looking at Lockie Neal. Uh, Lockie Neal has played more of a selfless role than what he has in other years. He's had Dunkley come in and help him. I know he's a co-captain with Harris Andrews, but as the season's gone on, he's proved that he's more about the team going well and winning than, than him just chasing kicks by, by his work rate away from the football and not chasing the footy as well. I think your point on the, the future of the Giants is is pretty good. Like If you're looking for the right mix of challenging and rebounding pretty quickly. And I remember Sydney, Jared, a few years ago, maybe 2020, 2019, went down, yep. but bounced straight back up. Yep. So the Giants, with what they did, so they won six last year and have bounced, whether they play finals or not, I'm not sure. But the core group of senior players that still have three to four years left in them with a nice sort of mid-range, and you can put in Taylor and Buckley and the key defenders that they've got there. But then the youngsters and, and Callahan has now got a, a few seasons. Lockie Ash is a young player, a high draft pick, has got a few seasons behind them. Um, they got the first pick in the draft, Cabman, who will improve next year. So I just think 
the core group of experience. You've got some nice middle role players and then the young stars coming through with another really good draft hand. I, I think they're going to be a force. What oh, I agree with that. Absolutely. With? I think they're very uh, they're very well coached. The coach has uh, explained exactly how he wants to play. I think that you'll see that in the recruiting coming up. But the biggest issue for them, uh, they had a hole in the ruck and they've filled it with the best ruckman in the game right now. Your over Briggsy. Uh, Briggsy has just been unbelievable. So they've had a couple of wins there. Who was the guy they got from Melbourne? Who's uh, Bedford. Bedford's been a, a superb pickup. Brent Daniels is back to his very best, and and they're doing it without. I mean, Hogan's had his best year. Um, Riccardi's going okay, but they just obviously understand the system that he wants them to play, and they're 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 perfecting it. What mm. what do they do with Himmelberg? Do they go through the phase of signing? They went through a patch there when they were pushing the grand final, where they signed big contracts for players, and straight after they signed big contracts, they had down seasons. Yeah. Are they going to fall into what other clubs have done and they've done in the past and, and sign Himmelberg on a a big overpriced contract so they keep him? Or are they going to learn from what they've done in the past? Yeah, I think they're smarter than that. I think they'll offer him a deal that they think is fair and it'll be a good deal. Yep. And then it'll be his call whether he wants to leave for an extra two, 300000 uh, But you're right. They shouldn't fall into the trap of trying to match that. And if he does leave... He's replaceable. You get the next one in and you and you go again, but you can't do that. And Gold Coast have suffered from overpaying and, and GWS the same. So, Jared, a, I, I just think you're offering what you what you can. I, I absolutely and can. be prepared to no, lose him. They've fallen for that trap a, long, a lot and they've still got guys on uh, too much money running through the uh, the middle of the ground. But uh, they have, they've got one of the best back lines. We've said this many times, if not the best back line in the game right now. Mm, yep, they're defending the inside 50. A high number of those, again, is as good as any team. Hodgie, it was a hard watch. The late game, the graveyard shift between the Saints and North. Ross thought the ball was slippery because the roof was left open. I'm calling a bit of rubbish on that. I just think both teams are pretty ordinary. <laughs> um, what do you I think? I didn't get a chance to watch a lot of it. I did see parts of it. You didn't miss anything, um, Hodgie. I, 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 oh, yes, I, you I, did. <laughs> what did he miss? LDU. That was yeah, one of the no, great he, midfield games. He was, he he was, was incredible. Well, missed I, a I'm close finish. Lie. I've got a few St Kilda uh, supporters as friends, and when I turned around and saw that at North Melbourne eighteen points up, I thought, "Oh, please don't do a West Coast against them," mm. and they did. So, uh, look, it's it's one of those ones. The, the St Kilda going through a bit of a troubled spot. They're not playing the football that they clearly were at the start of the year, um, and I think the the list is sort of playing out how how they are. Like the, where, where they're on the where they a position on the ladder is clearly over where that list really is, but. Um, as far as the wetness, I didn't. Uh, what I saw on the on the tape on the replay, I didn't see too many slippery conditions. Um, but I don't know, you know what Ross is like, and that's mm. where you can deter away from from the main focus of the football match. He's normally going to throw that out there. Mm. All right. Have the Dockers slipped under the radar? Unbelievably, they are in the bottom four, Hodgie, and I reckon they're the third worst team in the comp. I think Hawthorne have gone past them with what they're doing this year. Have you got a thought on on their troubles this year? Well, I don't think it's going to be just this year, Kane. Mm. I think it's you, you brought in Jackson on big money, which we've sort of said from the start that he are they getting him as the ruck, are they getting rid of Darcy? They have to make a call with that because they've given up next year's first round. So Melbourne are sitting here going, well, we're sitting in the top four. We've got Jackson's first pick. Can they play their way up to the number one pick to get a, a Harley Reid to keep him in Melbourne? Um, I, I feel for, for the Dockers because what we saw last year was a young, energetic team. Had Sarong going through the midfield, had Brayshaw. It seems like Brayshaw's had to try and adjust his game because both Sarong and him were both ball hunters trying to fight and get the same the same pill where it looks like Brayshaw is trying to work into that transition, spreading, running game, which has taken him away from the football. He's, he's played so well at, at Fremantle, but I, I feel for him because I, I thought the same as a lot of other people, bringing in a few people that they did, that they were going to take that next step up. And tell you what, to sit where they are at the moment is pretty disappointing for, for them and all their supporters. They've got a fair few injuries right now, but uh, your point's valid because when they had their full quota there. They just weren't anywhere near mm. the side that uh, their their talent suggests they should be. And Darcy and Fife ruled out for the rest of the season today as well. Really? So it could get worse. But I'm fascinated by that future drafting, uh, yep. future trading. Oh, it's amazing to it think is, that, that Melbourne have got four, 15, 23, 34, and next year's first rounder mm. as well. And a lot of that wrapped in with the, the with the Jackson trade. I mean, if anyone can, can tempt West Coast to give up one, it's probably Melbourne. If there was a, a ladder for Recruiting departments, Melbourne's right up there. effort over the last five, six, seven years has been as good as mm, anyone. Yeah. And that, that drafting, their drafting and their negotiating has been superb. It's like gambling. Is that, is that just after we spoke about Grundy? Is that been a little... Well, that's, yet to, that's yet to play out. 
I don't think they'd go back on that because it was what was it? Pick it's worth tw- a try. Pick twenty seven. You're not paying a whole five your or six hundred. And Grundy's thirty two. Oh, sorry, Gorn's thirty two mm-hmm. and has had an ACL and hurt his knee this year. So I mean, he's a pretty good backup to have. Yes. It's a little bit embarrassing when you make a pitch as compelling as that and you try and sell the way that it's going to work and one's forward and one's not and it lasts 16 games. I get that, but it hasn't necessarily hurt them. Like, I, I don't they're think. They're still sitting fourth. Yeah, they're fourth. And and if Gorn goes down, you've got an automatic replacement for the finals. I don't know if he gets back in. Grundy, I doubt whether he does, but I still think I still think they do that deal as, as much as they're going to have to eat a little bit of humble pie and keeping Grundy happy for four years is going to be a challenge. For them, um, as we touched on with Sammy Hodgie, a devastating use for uh, Will Ashcroft. Do you think he's done enough to win the Rising Star? Uh, no, no, I don't. I don't think he has. As much mm. as I've kept a, a close eye on him because he uh, he came in obviously a high pick for for the Lions and he excelled from the day he walked in as far as professionalism. Everything you want a young kid to do, he did. Um, he probably went over the top as a the professional as a, as a young kid, if if you if you can go that way. That's how serious he was about being the best footballer he possibly could be. To, but to see what he's done for them in his first year, uh, the composure that he's had to, to hurt his knee, be out for the season, um, it, you, you feel for the young fellow. But has he done enough? I don't think so. I think there's plenty. There's a good three or four. He was probably in the mix or in and around in the top couple prior to this, but I reckon there's a good three or four blokes. You look at a couple of North Melbourne guys um, that have put their hand up to um, to probably knock mm. him off. All right. Well, you can have your say on that.